Hey guys, it's Mei Mei. Are you sick of this impossible card yet? Ever since it was introduced to me from the first channel was Mixed Up Crafts, and then that sent me to Trim Crafts, and then that sent me to find out how it came about, which was from a card trick called the Hyper Card. I've been all about it, and I, this may be the last video about it. I don't know. I'm not going to promise, but these are the ones we've made so far. This was the original that I did the very first time. This is a five by seven, and this orientation is what we call like landscape orientation, but I want to do them in portrait because I want more space here. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it in a different orientation so you can get a little more space. So we're going to make templates just like I showed you the first time. Super easy to do the template, okay? Every time you have a card, whatever size you need it to be, this is A2, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. What you'll do is you'll find your halfway point first, but I want this card to stand up in this direction instead of in this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my middle point. I'll tell you what, I'll do it this way. I'm going to find my middle point here first, okay? So this one is five and a half. That means that my middle point is going to be two and three quarters. So what I need to do is put this little mar uh, ruler down and make a mark at two and three quarters. And then what I like to do using my cutting mat is I move that to the two and three quarter, or move that little mark to a straight line so that I can get a straight line top and bottom. And I can also make sure it's straight by looking over here using my little mat and put a line down the middle. Now I'm making a template, so I'm not gonna stress about those marks, they're fine. Then what you need to do is at the top, at the back side, I'm using my cutting mat again, I need to make a center point mark in the back. And that's gonna be this line right here, which if you need to measure that, Half of four and a quarter is two and one eighth. So that's the center point. So I'm gonna go from the center to that line we just made in the middle, okay? So that's my back slice. Then while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come in three fourths of an inch on either side from my middle line down, okay? Do the same thing over here, three fourths of an inch. Pull my ruler out this way and I'm using the lines inside the ruler to help me line that up. That's how I know that's three fourths of an inch out because I'm using those interior lines. And now I'm going to slice this, okay? I'm going to do this the same way we did the original that I showed you. Matter of fact, let me color these in with Sharpie. I found that making the templates makes things so easy because as a matter of fact, I did the original card as my card for this week for my Sunday videos where I send out 12 cards. And using the template, this is an easy, quick, fast card to do. So I'm very grateful for our sweet friends that showed us how this card works. And now we're just gonna go crazy doing all the modifications and the changes because that's what we do. That's what creators do. We get an idea and we run with it. I have some other ideas I'm working on with it, but I'm probably gonna give it a little break for a little while because <laughs> you guys are gonna be tired of that, I'm sure. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just like before when I made my templates, is I'm gonna cut that Sharpie mark away. So I'm gonna cut to one side of it. That'll be my first, that'll be where I draw. Okay, and then right beside the Sharpie mark, I'm gonna cut that away because that's where my pencil is gonna fit in. Same thing over here. I'm gonna cut to one side of the Sharpie and then to the other. And then I'm just gonna make a note on this one to say that this is my portrait orientation A2 instead of my landscape. Same thing here, cut to one side, just like so, and then to the other. And these little pieces will just come out of there and they leave us that little gap for our pencil to fit into. All right, so let's make a note. So if you're making a template at home, it's just like this. I'm gonna go A2, okay, and this is gonna be portrait. So I'll know. All right, now let's make the five by seven version. It doesn't matter what size your base is, you're gonna get it the same way. But instead of finding my center this way, because if I do, it'll sit up here. I don't wanna do that. I want it to sit up this way. So I'm gonna find my center here. So this is seven, okay, because it's a five by seven. So I need to do my center point at three and a half. So I'm just gonna line up and do that middle point. Don't worry about the measurements, by the way. I will put these on the blog post. I'll add these to our original post so you'll have them all in one place. And that way you can just run right there to get them. Now on this side, we're gonna do a two and a half inch. So I'm gonna go from the top to that middle line we just made. And then on these ends, I think I'm gonna do a one inch. You can adjust these whatever way you want them. So I'm gonna go from the middle point to one. And then I'm just gonna come in one inch on the other end. 
and go from the middle down. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and write on here and I'm gonna do my Sharpie marker. So this is my five by seven portrait. You'll see the big difference in just a second when I show you how these fold. Let's go ahead and trace these lines out. You don't really have to trace these out. You can just cut kind of a thick line. Um, but I'm doing this so you guys can see where my lines are. This really is a super fast card. If you want to do a card that has big impact, this one's really good. And the thing I love about it is it will lay flat for an envelope. Um, that's really cool. It lays as flat as as much dimension as you put on the card, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to cut to one side of the Sharpie. Then to the other side of the Sharpie. Same thing on the other side. I'm just doing this so I never have to measure again. Now when I get ready to make this card, all I have to do is pull this piece out and cut myself a five by seven card base, lay it on top and trace it, and it really goes fast. When I did the 12 on Sunday, I could not believe how quick that went. Because I thought, this is gonna take a while, but it doesn't, because you just, all the work is done for you by making the template. Now, you've asked, can you do these in uh, design space? Yes, this is so easy in your cutting machine software. These are just lines, and you don't even have to make the space like I'm making, because you can just make it have a cut line in these spots the very same way. Alrighty then. I'm gonna go ahead and put the measurements on here so I can take a photo for the blog, and then I'll show you how we use it to make a card. So now that I've made my template, I've cut myself a five by seven card. I'm gonna lay this on and I'm going to trace. So I'm gonna trace here, which is my two and a half mark. Then here, which is my one inch mark. Oh, I twisted it, there we go. And then here as well. Now you wanna make sure when you're tracing, I don't know if I pointed this out. This is an inch away, so I wanna trace this side, not this side that we cut away. This is an inch, so I wanna trace this side, not this side. Same here, this is two and a half inches in, so I wanna trace this side and not the other side where I just cut the marker away. That'll make sense when you're doing this at home. Now we just make some slices, and then this guy is ready to decorate. I'm telling you, this card has been very fun to do. I really thought, oh, it's so simple, but you know what? That's what I love about it. It's simple, but it doesn't look simple. And I am very appreciative of the folks who brought this to us. It's very cool. Matter of fact, I have them linked in my blog post that is below. So you can get to their original videos and see where I saw this for the first time. Really cool. All right, and then all you do is you twist one side back. You hold one side still and twist one side back. And then I line up this edge and fold one side down. And then I turn it and line up the edge and fold the other down. Now I wanna show you the difference in this and the first card I showed you. See how this one sits this way and we have this tall piece? On the original five by seven, it goes sideways and this one goes, you know, it's a little shorter. So I wanted some height. Isn't that cool? Same thing, just different orientation. And it will fit in the same size envelope and this will lay down and fit in your envelope. Okay, let me show you something else I wanna do. So I was playing with dies, y'all know, cause I did the partial die cutting one. Let me show you that one. This is the one that is the partial die cut. You can see that I um, did this little piece. I'll link this video below and also in the I card here for you so you can see how that works. But what I want to do, I have this little die cut that looks like a photo frame. I'm going to put it right here. How cute will that be? This is um, a Doris die. We carry this in our store and I think it is adorable for right here. So I'm just going to cut out this little photo frame using that die. I'm cutting it in white because it reminds me of like, you know, a traditional little instant photo frame. So then here's our little photo frame. Look how cute that's gonna be right there. I love that. But I'm also gonna do some corner rounding. I want it to match the corners of this little photo frame. So I'm gonna use my corner rounder and the quarter of an inch rounder instead of the half inch. I usually use the half inch, but I think the quarter inch is gonna look good with that. And I'm gonna round every sharp corner. So these, and then I'm gonna to come to these little flaps as well. So see how much more that looks, you know, more like the little photo frame there. This I'm going to pop up, but I think what I'm going to do, since I might give this to someone, you would either give it to them with a photo in it, and then you wouldn't have to worry about this part, but I think I'm going to put it where they can slide a photo in and out. So I'm going to use some foam on the back of this and almost treat it like a partial shaker card. So check this out. I'm going to cut myself from foam, from Foam Me Up Scotty here. 
So this first piece, the bottom piece, it's a little bit wide and that's okay because I need strips here. So I'm gonna cut a strip off this side. But this piece is gonna go here and I'm gonna line it up just below the little opening for the photo and make sure that goes across. So that'll be the stop when the photo drops in. That's where it will stop is against that piece of foam. There we go, cut that away. And then this long piece that I cut, I'll bring it back over and we'll start it here. I don't have to be as precise with this touching because this is not gonna hold in a glitter or anything loose. It's gonna hold a photo. So as long as it's hidden behind there, we'll be fine. Just wanna snip it so it's not too long. Whoops. Okay, there we go. So this can now go here and the photo can slide in and out just like that. I think what I'm gonna do is stamp on the inside here, place photo here, and even tell them the dimension of the photo. So let's measure that. So I'm, I measure my little photo frame opening and it's a two by two square. So what I'm gonna do is I cut a piece here that's two by two and three quarters, and here's why. I'm gonna turn it into kind of a little tag that they can grab at the top and pull out, and I'm going to stamp on it, place photo here and the word pull, so they'll know they can pull this out and then they can slide a photo in place of it when they get this card at home. Now again, you could just uh, put a photo in there and, give this as, and make the photo be part of the gift, but I thought this would be cute if you're just making a gift for somebody like this. So stamp place photo here. And then from the same stamp set, it's my set called Action. I'm gonna get the word that says pull and I'm gonna stamp it right at the top. Top center. Perfect, okay. And then this guy can go right inside here once we get it where it goes. See how cute that is? That'll be perfect. I also decided to mat my pop-up piece there so that whenever there is no photo in the frame, it'll still be cute on here. So see, I just cut a piece to go right there. It was two and three quarters by three and a quarter, and that is gonna work right there. Now I can't decide which side I want up. I think I want the, the bigger white dots up. I thought I was gonna use these smaller ones, but when I put it there, it looked better. Anybody else do that? You do a little test and go, hmm, changed my mind. I like that white showing. It's important that you remember with these cards to use a nice stick, thick card base so that this won't flatten out too much. You want it to stand up and don't overweight it. And I'm putting a fairly good bit of amount of weight on here. It's gonna be fine, but you don't wanna to put too much on it. All right, so peel this little backer off, just like so. And then I'm gonna slide this guy in so that way the recipient knows that's where you place the photo. Look how cute that is like that and it just pops right up. Now I wanna decorate here and underneath. So I cut these little pieces to go in this area. I like the bright colors. I thought it was cute with the orange and the blue. And so that's what's gonna go right there. And in the video I did on Saturday, with the partial die cutting, I showed you how to cut these pieces. So I'll be sure to link that video for you so you can see how to get these done. There we go. All right, and then I wanna put something across here and I wanna show you what I did. So from my stamp set called Oh Snap Friends, I did I, um, stamped this little camera and cut it out. And then I just made these two little strips that I corner rounded and that's gonna go right here and live in this area. But first, I'm gonna stamp on here. So on this little orange strip, I'm going to stamp, take a picture, it'll last longer. That's a saying from our um, Oh Snap stamp set, and I think it's funny. It reminds me of when I was in high school, we were like, take a picture, it'll last longer. So funny, so I'm gonna snap it, I mean, snap it, I'll stamp it right there. And then we can assemble this part too. All right, so this little guy is gonna go on here, just like so. Then I think I'm gonna pop the camera up. But here's what I like to do. I like to square this up on my mat. Make sure it's good and square. I'm gonna put some glue on this side and then over here where it's gonna touch the other side across the little gap we have there. So place that down and then square that up. 
this little piece is what's going to be what will help square up your card if it gets a little out of whack right there, which it can because that's a little loose. Let's put a little foam on here. Put a little foam tape on the back. And then I'm going to put that kind of in this angle. I think that's cute. And then in the back, I think what I'm going to do instead of um, writing back here, I think I'm going to put myself a bigger piece to write. And then I can put another little thing here. I could put another picture, but I think it might get too heavy because we're already kind of pushing it. I'm going to crease that down again, but I don't want that to get too heavy. So I may just put another little piece of pattern paper back here, but give myself a bigger space to write. So I've just cut myself a white strip that I'm going to glue down to the back side here. And I'm going to let it go almost all the way across. It's going to go from one matte edge to the other. And that's going to give me the space to write a sentiment. Maybe, maybe I want to put a picture in that we took during a special occasion or something, and I want to journal what the occasion was. That'll go in the back, and then I can put a piece of pattern paper here. So this little piece is two and three-fourths by three and a quarter, just like we used on the front. And I'm just mounting that there in the back. And I think we'll see if I can find a sticker. That'd be cute to have a sticker on the back. Just something to look at if you do catch it from behind. So let's do that. I found this little sunshine sticker. I'm going to stick it on the back. I think that's cute. And I know a lot of you guys ask about decorating the back. You should have something back there. But for the most part, the recipient's going to be looking at the front of the card most of the time. So having a place to write a cute little note. And then how cute is this for someone to put on their desk at work or maybe on a bookshelf where they can look at it all day long and have a little picture. And when the person gets it, they can use this to help them size up the photo that's going to go in as well. Isn't that cute? So the difference is the orientation. That's what we're doing different today. Instead of having this piece that's short and goes wide, we're having this piece that is tall and is a little less is a little less wide. I think it's cool to give you two different options. And I really love how this one looks. It gives you a lot more space. And if you wanted to do that partial die cutting with this, that would be super cool because you get a lot more height to be able to show that off. All right, guys, that's A2 and 5x7 showing you how to do it in the different orientation. I hope you guys are enjoying these as much as I am. I love them. So I was asked if these fit in a regular envelope. They do as long as you keep all of your decorations inside your card base. And as long as your card base is cut to fit in an envelope. So this being a five by seven, the only thing that's going to stop me is that little tab sticking out. So I could always shorten the tab or do away with it either way. But as long as your decorations fit inside, you're good. Hey, if you guys make these, we want to see them. I love the inspiration. Head over to our website called maymaymadeit.com. Share your pictures on our customer gallery. I love to see what you guys are making. And also, you can share on our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I. So there's the difference, the long way and the tall way. Either one works. And if you want to find out the measurements for these, be sure to check the blog post I've linked below. I'm going to add these to it so you'll have all of the orientation. You'll have this way and this way of what I've done so far. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.